Hello everyone, Henry is my name, your chef as usual, and I'm reporting for duty again today. And we're in for something very interesting, knife skills. I'm sure many of you love what comes from the kitchen, beautifully plated, looking very nice, the dices, the slices on point, and you wonder, have they used the machine? How do they come up with it? Today, I'm gonna to take you on that journey and you're gonna love it all the way. To start with, now, in the kitchen, usually, the knife takes almost 10 or rather 90% of your time. You have to cut, you have to slice, you have to dice. Somehow you're using the knife. So it is very important the type of knife that you have, how you handle your knife, and what you do with your knife. Remember, as we are going through this, I want to remind you, you don't have to be a professional for you to be professional. To start with, in the kitchen, for you to master your knife skills, you must have a stable cutting surface. Now, if your surface is like this, probably it's marble, it's a tile, it's silver, something that is slippery, that when you put your board, it plays, then you need to stabilize it. First of all, you should always have a chopping board or a cutting board in your kitchen. Now, just in case it is not stable, I'm gonna give you one technique of having it stabilized. One is, you need a kitchen towel. I know this serves a lot of purposes in the kitchen, but for today, it's gonna to be a stabilizer. If your surface is slippery, just get a kitchen towel, uh, take it under running water, and squeeze the water out, so make sure it is damp. Not wet, just damp. And then mine is already damp, so I'm just gonna lay it here. After you lay it, you get your chopping board and place it on top. That way, you see that? You see how firm it is? Simple technique. You don't have to be a professional for you to know this. Just watch my kitchen and you will learn all these techniques. Second is your knife. When you go buying your knife, make sure you buy a knife that suits or fits the size of your fingers. Not something very big, not something very small, but something that you're comfortable to work with. And your knife should be sharp, so it can be under your command. A sharp knife will always give you exactly what you want. If it is blunt, you're going to have to compete with it and I'm sure you cannot win it in that battle. So, your knife. How do you handle your knife? Many people handle their knives in funny, funny different ways, as if they're gonna fight, as if they're going for war. You hold it like you're gonna stab someone. But remember, it is food, so you have to handle it with care and love. So, number one, this is how you hold your knife. Some people have a tendency of holding it like this. Now, if you hold it like this, it's gonna take away from your energy. You're gonna use a lot of energy for you to be able to do whatever you want to do. So the best way, the professional way is, take your knife, pinch it. These three fingers are gonna sit just right here, and then you're good to go. So all the effort you're gonna use is gonna be centered here. So this will be what we used to call the fulcrum or the pivot. You'll excuse my physics. So it's easy for you to work with your knife. You can jack it back and forth. You can even just slice through if you wanted. Now, you're wondering, what about this other hand? What is it doing? Simple and easy. This other hand is going to hold whatever you're cutting in place. But how you hold it in place is very important because most people cut their fingers. A lot of accidents are happening in the kitchen because of how we handle our food and the knife. So the best way is you form a claw, like a lion, you know, a claw. And then this will hold everything in place. So that way, the knuckles are protecting you. Your knuckles are protruding so you cannot cut yourself. However, people make a mistake or a tendency of the pinky protruding. If the pinky protrudes, you're risking to cut it. So the best way is keep it behind, just like the, the thumb. They should both be behind whatever you're cutting. So at every one time, the knife should be kissing the knuckles. So, like this. Okay, did you see that? Simple and easy. Now, I have a variety of fruits here today that I'm gonna work with. I have uh, watermelon, different types of watermelon. I'm also gonna show you how to peel and work with a watermelon and some mango. But before I do that, I wanna take a very short break, then come back and we continue. Today we are learning some simple knife skills to simplify your work in the kitchen and we are working with fruits. Now I'm sure you must be wondering why I'm putting on these gloves. When you're working with your fruits or vegetables, if you're doing a salad, you want to minimize as much as you can 
how many times you touch the food because every time you expose it, you want to reduce uh, your touching and playing with it. So better you put on some gloves like this if you have them. If not, make sure your hands are super clean. Now all my fruits here, we are washed and set aside because I don't want them to be dripping. So I wash them and set them on the side. So I'm going to start with this watermelon. There are different ways of working with the watermelon and I'm sure you're going to be very, very intrigued. So to start with, like I said, you have a stable cutting surface. If it's not stable, stabilize it with a wet towel or a damp towel rather, or a piece of paper, sharp knife. Now, the next bit is you want to create a stable cutting surface on your fruit or vegetable or whatever it is that you're cutting. Now, if you see my watermelon, it is uh, not stable. So we want to create a stable surface before we peel it. Now, the best way is one, take your knife, that is stable already so same way this side take your knife and have it stable again now my watermelon is not very ripe very red because I was using it just for demonstration so but when you go buying your watermelon make sure you get a red one a ripe one and very juicy so it is stable already now we want to learn how to peel it now this could be probably the hardest way. I'm going to come up with even easier ways of how to peel it. Now take your knife and just go up all the way down. You see that? How easy is that? That simple. Now this is where a sharp knife is very very important in your kitchen. So you see I'm not using a lot of energy. Initially it looks very difficult, very hard, probably because you have not done it before. But uh, remember practice makes perfect. So one, two, three times doing it and then you'll be perfect at it. You will be a professional. Like I said, you don't have to be a professional for you to be professional. So take all this away. that simple so you see that now there will be a few little whites remaining that is very easy still just take your knife and just clean it up then turn it this side again and do the same So our watermelon is easily peeled. That simple, just taking your knife and going down that way. Now, this is one of the ways. However, I don't want to leave my watermelon like this, so I'm gonna do something with it. Just want to uh, level my ground here. Then, take your knife again. Set that aside. I'm going to get another chopping board here. So I can be placing my product. Now, here, we're going to, we've halved it. We're going to quarter it. Now, remember what I told you about your hands and your finger. This is holding everything in place. This is taking the knife and then it's that simple. Now, look at this. Take your knife and just my uh, beautiful platter here. I'm sure in a hotel, in a restaurant, you've come across uh, a watermelon set in place for you. Now, look at this simple technique. Just take your palm and gently press it. 
Look at that. I'll just show you the other side so you can see it. See how beautiful it looks? So that is one simple way of working with a watermelon. We have peeled it by creating a stable cutting surface. We halved it, quartered, and then we sliced. So we got that beautiful. Now I want to show you another simple way of working with a watermelon. Ooh, beautiful melon here, as you can see. Now, like I said, when you go buying your watermelon, make sure you choose one that is ripe, red, and juicy. Now, this is another easy way of working with a watermelon. Just in case you do not want to hassle with peeling, or maybe you have guests around and uh, you don't want to have peels everywhere. This is one simple way. Take your melon and half it lengthwise. You see, lengthwise, or you could even just have it like this, so you cut it all the way down. Not, not uh, the other way around, it should be lengthwise. So I'll put it down here. Now remember, we are creating a stable cutting surface once again. So take your knife. You have something beautiful. Look at that color. Look at the juices that are coming out. I love this. So we are now still, you see what we talked about, a stable cutting surface. So it is firm. See that? Take your knife and just get a quarter of it. So I'll set this aside. Now I have this melon here. I want to find a simple way of slicing it. Let everybody have a piece of it without me messing up the whole area or without throwing anything away. So first step, take your knife and... Take it off the base. Just make sure it is off the base. Perfect. Now, after that, just take your knife and equal cuts and incisions. Just like that. And then look at this. How do you like that? I have my skewers here. These are usually used for a barbecue, for grills in the home. But remember, you have guests around and you don't want people to be moving and going everywhere to wash their hands and coming back. So you have beautiful skewers here. So this is one of the ways that you're gonna work with this watermelon. So you take a skewer and Remember how we used to um, eat candy? I'm gonna turn my boat. <laughs> I'm loving this. Remember, like I said, you don't have to be a professional for you to be professional, to do all these things. It's just a few skills, a little practice here and there and you are getting there already. So I have a beautiful, uh, those who watched Pilots of uh, the Caribbean. <laughs> Woo, I love this already. Look at that. So I'm gonna set this on the side, get my beautiful bot, and set it on. <laughs> Guess what happens? When your guests come, everyone just picks a skewer, just like this and they're good to go. Mm. They like singing. So even if you had workers at home, maybe they're cleaning up and 
you had a team coming over, maybe they are cleaning service, and you just want to be nice to them. So give them some watermelon for refreshment. Simple way. So everybody just picks one and I'm sure you have enjoyed the way we've worked with watermelon and you're very excited. I can feel you saying the next time I'm going to work with the watermelon, I'm going to do something very interesting and fascinating. Now with me here, I have a pineapple, one of the most uh, frequently used or eaten fruits in our homes. Uh, probably the most, I should say. If you want to test if your pineapple is ready, there are different ways. One, if, if you see down here at the bottom, if you attempt to smell the aroma of the pineapple should be striking you right away. The other way you could test is if you press it gently and it starts to give away, like it bounces back, you, you press, it goes in and bounces back gently, then you know your pineapple is ready. Now, another thing about the pineapple is that in most cases, everybody enjoys eating this lower part from here, probably halfway or three quarters downwards because it's juicier and sweeter. Then the upper part tends to be a little bit stale and very acidic. So many people either discard it or they give it away. But if you want the sugars of the pineapple to be evenly distributed, when you buy your pineapple, store it like this. If you store it like this overnight, or maybe two hours or three hours, all the sugars from up here are going to flow down and up. So that way, the sweetness of your pineapple and the juiciness is evenly distributed because this part tends to be sweeter and juicier than this part so trick keep it like this so right now let's go into cutting or peeling our pineapple very easy and simple ways i will show you probably two or three ways and then others we shall learn as we go number one you see it has a crown and it has the best and remember when we were working with a watermelon we talked about uh, creating a stable cutting surface on our fruit so number one take your knife now i have a chef knife which is very sharp now instead of struggling to cut the tip of the knife, you can use just to create a simple, small incision, like that, such that when you start to cut, it's easy. Did you see that? So you have the crown, you can set it on the side, or I'll place it here. So our pineapple can now be stable. And then also, back here, remember the trick, take the tip of your knife, just to create a simple incision, see that? Then take your knife and Cut off the bottom, this here. Now we have our pineapple stable and ready to cut. Now, easy and simple ways, just like we did with the pineapple, uh, with the watermelon. Take your knife, uh, almost at the base or the behind of the knife, and gently. A little bit of the eyes popping out, it's easy. Just take your knife again, just like we did with the watermelon, and just clean it up. So right now we have peeled our pineapple, very clean, very neat. As you can see, no eyes popping, no peels. So the, the next step is to, there are two ways. You could have, work with it the whole way as is, or the easier way is place it down, half it. I have my platter here, place it here, put that there. Take this here. Now, it has a core as you can see. So, we want to serve a pineapple without the core. Please pay attention. I make an incision next to the core, halfway the core, again and again. Then, turn it at a 90 degrees angle. Again, take your knife. Now, after doing that, look at this. So, we can easily and comfortably take the core out without any struggle. How easy is that? Now, this is another easy and simple way. Now, take your pineapple again, take your knife all the way down, just like we did with a watermelon. I'm gonna place this here. Look at this uh, pineapple. As you can see, 
This is the core. Now this time we're not getting rid of the core the way we did with the first, uh, the first style. This time we're just going to carve it out. But as you can see, it has got like, like veins or tissues that are driving away from the core. Take your knife, place it at this angle, and then just between the core and the flesh, bring your knife. By the time it is done, it's almost halfway in, see that? Then turn it around again. If you can hold it in the palm, let it in the palm, let it sit on the board. Take your knife again from the edge, like that. And just make sure you've cut it all through the middle. Yep, just, just like that. Now you have to pay very close attention because you don't want to go all the way for the pineapple to fall apart. So we've got rid of the core this time in this style. So I'll place that there. Now place your pineapple. If you want it, you can half it and slice it or you can slice it as is, then you half it. So take your knife. Now look at the way I'm using my knife. I'm not just, I am placing it and, you see that? Pulling it towards myself. Now the size of the slices is going to depend on your personal preference, how you want to slice it or what size you're, uh, you're slicing. It could be bigger, it could be thinner. You see that? Like that. Now, there are two ways. Like we did with our uh, watermelon. I'm going to show you again. I'm going to place this here. I took my spatula, but I'm going to use my knife again. Take my knife and place my pineapple on my platter. Now, if you wanted, just as is, you could just gently, how easy and how good and how presentable is that? Like I said, it's an easy way of having so many people served with the same piece of pineapple, uh, but just the way you cut it, the way you slice it. So this time we have looked at this way, we have sliced it and then halved it to give us a beautiful shape. Now, usually, like I said, you see this part seems to be uh, more riper than this part, but because of the way we tilted our pineapple to make sure the sugars are distributed, the sweetness, regardless of the color, is even and the same. So we've also had this. Ah, I love this. And we have had this too. So look at that. You can have it this way, you can have it this way, you can have it this way, you can have it this way. <laughs>